In this live self-defense training video, you'll learn and discover how this self-defense walking stick could save your life. This is a simple length walking stick. You can see that if your elbow bends here naturally, 90 degrees, you can use it as a hiking pole, a trekking pole. This is actually a martial arts Joe staff, which is the same length as a lot of hiking sticks or walking sticks. I have learned recently, I used to say you can't take this on the plane. I've seen this get through TSA and get on to a lot of planes recently. And people have been reporting to me. You've been telling me, hey, you, I was wrong. And I, when I'm wrong, I'll admit I was wrong. And I'm not always right. But you'd let me know if, in the comment section below if you've taken a walking stick onto a plane because a lot of you said that you have and I believe now that it's true. But let's get right into it. This is 54 inches long. The way these are generally measured is it comes up to about the starting point of your armpit right there. Maybe it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. That doesn't matter as much. You want to have a little bit of a bend in the elbow to work with this size medium walking stick or medium length. In other words, it's not taller than you and it's not 36 inches like a walking cane. From here, there are a lot of simple basic moves that you can immediately employ in self-defense. The first one being just a simple thrusting motion. So from here, straightening that elbow using that hard piece of wood. And this one's made out of hickory. This is a self-defense walking stick that you can buy. There's a link below if you want to see what the dimensions are. And I always say invest your time before you invest your money. So if you want to make your own, go to the website, see what the dimensions are. And if you're crafty, make your own. From here, turning the shoulders and the hips increases the speed of that strike. Moving in at the same time by taking a step with that front foot will give you stopping power in a simple, immediate, direct, and explosive strike with this first move. So this first move, using your self-defense walking stick that could save your life, just goes straight in. And your target is anywhere on the center line of his body, and eyes, nose, throat, into the solar plexus, down into the groin. The second move I want you to practice is lifting your elbow up, almost like you're gonna do an old style uppercut before we knew how to do uppercuts, right? We thought we'd just bring our elbow up. But from here, bringing your elbow up drives the bottom, the longer part of your walking stick, up between his legs, up into the jaw, maybe into his hand very quickly, very explosively. It's hard to see it coming. Oh, I, I got, thank you. MV Gamer says, hello, wanted to thank me. Want to thank you for being here. And Doug says, yeah, an expert caner, someone who does the basics better. Amen, Doug, thank you. Basics, basics, basics. First one is a thrust, second one is a lift. It can't get more basic than that. You can practice this all day long, or you can practice it for three, four, five minutes a day, and you're gonna become an expert fast at the basics. Thrust first, lift second. The third one is pushing and then turning your hand, which is going to snap the side up hard alongside the side of his head for self-defense. If you can knock him out, knock him out, you don't have to worry about if he has a weapon, if he's bigger, if there are multiple attackers. This is for self-defense. This simple self-defense walking stick could save your life if you immediately respond to the threat. So number one, thrust. And remember, extend the arm, turn the shoulders and the hips, and take a step at the same time when you have three things. When you have that extension, you have rotation in the shoulders and the hips, and then you have acceleration by taking that step, you will have stopping power. Number two, lifting this arm up, snapping it up between his legs, put him on the floor, maybe hit him under the chin. Anywhere you hit him, it's gonna be effective. From there, you can also throw the other hand onto it, and now you have this thrusting motion. The third one I want you to practice is punching and turning your thumb to the ground. That creates this arc where the long side of the back of your staff or your walking stick is gonna come up along the side of his head. It's very hard to see it. It catches them off guard. It's immediate, direct, explosive, and it works for self-defense. Those are the first three that you should practice when you start to learn how to use the simple walking stick for self-defense. The thrust, the lift, and the turn of the wrist. Just think of a, a good punch where you turn your hand over, that's how you're gonna do it. Now, if self-defense is important to you, or if training with self-defense weapons like this is important to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know, and subscribe. I do a lot of these videos. I do thousands, I've done over a thousand videos just on stick weapons. And if you like that kind of content, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up so I can keep making them and so you get notified so we can work together and train together. So from here, pushing, second one, lifting, third one, striking. Now, the next thing I want you to think about is getting it into the other hand 
for not just this thrust here, but pulling the hand back so that you can slide it down over the top, right through the middle, right onto the forehead, crack, knock, <laughs> lights out, right? Immediate direct explosive, that means shortest distance between the two points, there's that simple thrust. Think of a bayonet attack. If you've ever been in or served in the military, you went to boot camp 25, 30 years ago like I did, however long ago it was, <laughs> seemed like 100 years ago, you practice this basic motion. And the reason you do that in the military is because that's the most effective. The military, you know, believe it or not, has a lot of combat experience, a lot more than a lot of the theorists like me who teach in martial arts schools like this around the world, coming up with idea after idea. Military's practiced it. They've had to rely on it, either live or die. It's as simple as that. That's why a bayonet attack or a rifle butt strike or a pugilistic move striking to the side is so effective. And that's why it can, yes, you can learn how to do all kinds of fancy twists and turns and strikes using the traditional martial arts moves. And I love to teach that. I'll teach you that. I'll teach everybody that because that's my passion. All of the cool things that you can do with a traditional martial arts weapon like this are very fun and exciting. However, I want you to know how to defend yourself for real. I want it to work. If it doesn't work, we're not going to do it. We're going to pressure test it. That means somebody's got to come after you and maybe put a little bit of pads on, but they really make sure that you can stop them by shoving that right in his face, by turning, snapping that up alongside the head, by lifting up between the legs and by thrusting through his throat, smashing down on top of the head. Now that last one comes from this thrust and the hand slides to the end. This comes over your head and just straight down on top. If you need to, you could change the angle. You could take it down into his knee, or maybe it's an animal. A lot of you let me know all the time that you carry your stick. You have this uh, walking stick for self-defense that could save your life because there's a dog or multiple dogs. or you, You've had it happen to you. You've been bit. You're, and you've walked your dog and your dog gets bit by someone else's aggressive dog or by an aggressive dog that's off the chain, off the uh, leash just running around in the neighborhood and you're carrying the stick for that reason. I see that in my neighborhood in the mornings. They have a little, little small neighborhood. Two older men carry these and it's not for other people. It's for the dogs and the other wild animals. We live in a place where we get alligators. They carry it for the alligators. We get wild boars that are you know this big and the big tusks. They carry it for those vicious animals. So you can carry this uh, walking stick for self-defense. It can save your life to stop one of those attacks. Now, the nice thing about this, especially when we talk about a bladed attacker, somebody with a knife, and I'm just gonna let you know, please leave me the comments for some of you out there who love to say, you know, if he pulls out a knife, you should run. Yes, absolutely run. But if you feel like you need to put that in the comments, put that in the comments. If you feel like you need to say, if he's got a knife, you're just gonna use your 38, 22, 45, 308, whatever you wanna put in the comments, please put that in the comments. What I'm saying is, what if this is all you've got, right? You're out for a walk. What if you live in a country where you don't have access to one of these? Most of you do, right? It's very few countries in the world that have the freedoms around one of these. So it might not be an option, or maybe you just don't wanna carry it. Maybe it's not called for. Maybe it's not appropriate in self-defense, and the self-defense escalates to that point. And by then, they've already closed the distance. But if you've got this, you can create that distance, you can move back, you can thrust. But I wanted you to see this. This is very important. This is why I love this walking stick for self-defense that could save your life, is because you have massive reach advantage. Mooney, hello. It's good to see you, Mooney. Look at that. This is 54 inches. That's a good, I'd say that's 11 or 12 inches. I've never measured it, but we'll say that's probably, that's gotta be a foot long. There's no comparison. I would much rather be this far away if he's got one of those. It's gonna be harder for him to reach me than for me to stick this right through his throat for self-defense, if I have to. And that, it is not for street fighting, it's not for hurting people, it's only if it's life or death. You or him, and him being that thug, criminal, whatever. I just like to put my gear away, right? All right, so for a quick review, first thing I want you to practice is, and you don't need a bag to hit. You don't have to have some striking surface. You can do all of this in your living room. You can do it out in the backyard. You can do it in the park down the street. You can do it in your hallway. You can practice a thrust, a lifting motion, 
and a turning motion. In fact, if you do it in a tighter space, just make sure you don't put a hole in the wall, tighter spaces are better. Practice closed quarters combat. Practice self-defense in confined spaces. What if you're stepping out of your apartment in the morning and you're in the breezeway and that's where the attack happens? And you have to respond just immediately, directly. It's good to practice that way. Bring this up between the legs. You can bring this up like you're rowing a boat and very quickly, powerfully across the side of the head. First one is the thrust. The second one is the lift. The third one is a punch and a turn. A punch and a turn. And then I want you to practice putting your hand, like you're answering your phone to your ear, you're gonna bring this up and look how that creates this nice shelf of protection. It's almost like a roof or putting your helmet on. From here, practice that rifle butt or bayonet attack, just a thrusting strike. Slide your hand down the end. This one doesn't let go, this one is loose. And you bring your hand down straight on top of the head. Then put it in your other hand, practice those combinations again. Practice one, Two, three, two hand, thrust, slide, straight down the middle. And that's extremely powerful. Watch what your hand is doing. Your hand is pushing as it's sliding. That means you're, you're pulling with the bottom hand. All strikes should be pulls, by the way. You should be pulling these strikes. So you're pulling this strike as you're accelerating with the other hand. You're making it even faster, which makes it harder to stop Harder for him to defeat when you're defending yourself with this walking stick that could save your life. Self-defense walking stick. All for self-defense. So one more time for review. You put it in the other hand, get in your better position, hand up and open. Pay attention to what's happening around you. Practice, visualize, striking. When you visualize, I want you to think about what happens as that goes in smashing his face and his nose, the blood that's coming out, his reaction. Slow it all down in your head. Try to get a good mental picture create what's going to happen in your head so that when it happens for real, you know what to do and it doesn't shock you and it doesn't surprise you and it doesn't slow you down. Learn how to respond to the threat by visualizing it in training. And then when it happens for real, God forbid, if it does, hello, Doug, it's good to see you. You know how to move. Pushing, lifting, punch and turn, answer your phone, get it in the other hand, bayonet strike or rifle butt. I always like the, the bayonet, it's got the, it's, it's nasty because you've got that, uh, this, this is more really, more the bayonet, right? Because you've got your, I found my, I've got, I've got a bunch of different bayonets from different periods. I found my father's bayonet from uh, Vietnam era the other day. I was just playing with it, showing the kids. But that thing's vicious, man. It's like this long. But that, we go on the old, what was it, M1 rifle? <laughs> it's your phone. Get your hand on the other hand, thrust slide down and bring this down over the top. And again, if you want to see, this is made out of hickory. Um, oh, thank you very much. So the, the films are very educational. I appreciate you being here. You guys make this the best channel. When, when you give me the thumbs up and you subscribe and you share and you become a member or you go over to Patreon and become a member, then that helps me make more of these. So please uh, accept my uh, sincere, sincere gratitude and thanks. Thank you so much for that. But when you pull this up, I was thinking of rifle butt strike. Uh, the rifle butt on a, an M16 or an M4, it's really hard, right? And if you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. It smashes really hard. So think about that smashing strike, but then you're gonna go old school martial arts, almost like with your katana, right? With your Japanese sword, or in this case, make sure you don't hit the ceiling, with your, um, what's the, the wooden one, right? Not the jukdo or the, the Shinai. Shinai was the bamboo one, but the, uh, the Boken, that's what I'm thinking. Using your, your Japanese Boken, lifting, strike, pull, and thrust. And remember, you're pulling this arcing motion, the slicing motion, pulling with the bottom hand, accelerating the strike. Literally, you're pushing as you slide your hand, come down. Now, don't bring your hands together. You create a pivot point and you'll over-rotate. This is how you hit a home run. I know, I used to hit a lot of home runs. I was ambidextrous too. That's what the martial arts would do for you. Sensei Emmett, so great to see you. Haven't seen you forever. Um, we were just, I was talking about uh, self-defense and we were with a friend and he's going to Ireland soon. He says, what do I need to train for? I'm gonna be in Ireland for a little bit. And I said, you gotta look up Sensei Emmett and do some training with Sensei Emmett in Ireland. So you're gonna lift it up, 
thrust, slide, and striking, bringing it down over the top, just straight in. Now, uh, quick, now I don't know why, I, I don't need to mention it, but I will, because I've just thought of it, I just saw it. I'm supposed to have a class right now. No one showed up, that's why I've got my belt on. I usually don't teach with my belt when I'm doing these things, because I don't want you to think you have to have any kind of belt to do any kind of martial arts, you really don't. You don't at all, but especially not self-defense. There's no need for martial arts for a karate belt or anything else when you do self-defense. So if that ever enters your head, just strike it out. The belt doesn't mean anything. It's just a way to, it's part of the marketing, right? It's part of um, identifying the person who's the instructor in the room. In my opinion, for some people it's very meaningful and I'm not trying to take that away, but I've just been doing it for too long to, <laughs> to have those meanings uh, be that important to me anymore. I don't want my belt to, to make anybody feel like they can't learn because they can and you can learn and you can learn better than me. And anything I can do, you can do better. I believe in that. And, and I, or you can at least do as well, right? And if you want to do better than me, you better practice harder because I practice all the time. And the older I get, the harder I practice. You guys have been awesome. Please put in the comment section below if you've made one of these yourself. If you've made the Joe staff or if you have one of these, this is made by Kane Masters. Yeah, Doug says it's used to hold up your belt. Uh, since Amos says definitely touch base. Trina Ireland. Yeah, belt seems important until, yeah, until you've had it for a long time and then you realize there's, it's not as important as we all always thought it was when we were kids, right? Yeah, anyway, the Karate, karate Kid movie, the first one, um, said it best. When he had, you know, Daniel's son asks Mr. Miyagi about his belt and he's, he's like, yeah, I've got a black belt, it came from Sears. <laughs> Holds up your pants. You know, he, what did he say? Karate is, is here and here, but not here, not in the belt. And here, but it's not in the belt. And that's true, self-defense. Self-defense is definitely here. Self-defense is all over this, but self-defense has nothing to do with what you wear. You guys have been awesome. I will see you in a little bit. Thank you.